Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Harika. So in previous videos on API automation, we have understood enough about API automation, right? Okay, let me just do a quick recap. So we have seen what is basically API automation and the terminology around it. And we have uh, seen how to do API calls and also based on the different JSON formats, we have seen what are the different activities to use in order to fetch the data from that particular JSON, right? So now in this video, I am going to show you how we can um, access, like how we can perform actions in Orchestrator. So we know about Orchestrator, right? So let me just show you. <clears throat> So in Orchestrator, we do perform uh, many actions, right? Like uh, creating an asset or calling a robot or running a job or, you know, creating a folder. So all these things we do, but basically we do them manually, right? And also we do, uh, we do scheduling and everything manually. So uh, how we can do the same things by using Orchestrator APIs. So here I am showing on the screen right now uh, to the left, first of all, these are the different actions and the different, uh, you know, calls, API calls that we can perform on the orchestrator. So basically, we can do an authentication, which is first and the foremost thing to in order to go ahead, like, you know, either to get the folders or perform in anything on the orchestrator. First, we have to authenticate, like we have to get the authentication for that particular orchestrator tenant. So this is the first thing after that we get we can get what are the different folders that are there so we know there are multiple folders in orchestrator like classic modern different types of folders right so how we can get the folders so once after we get the folders we can start the job in that particular folder so for starting the job we need a process what process you wanted to start and what robot you have to use and what is the environment that is located in so these are the different things so this will be uh, almost kind of similar for classic how we will do for modern how we'll do with little bit variations and um we can check the process status, uh, whether it is running or it is faulted or whatever what is the status of that particular process. And, and later, if you can see here, we can add the queue item and the queue, get queue item. And we can create assets, get assets and edit assets. And we can get all the robots that are there in that particular excuse me, particular folder of the orchestrator. So these are the different things basically we can perform on a um, orchestrator using API. So do you feel it's interesting and something new to learn? So then this video and this whole series is for you. So first of all, in this series, I will be explaining how we can do that. Uh, so this video is basically concentrating on the first one with this, which is authentication. So in this, uh, I will show you first of all how to use Postman for this uh, API calls and later I will take up this and show you how we can do the same thing in the studio. So I have splitted this into two series in the in this particular series API calls uh, through Postman. You can see everything how you can do that using Postman and the same thing based on the output, uh, based on everything that we can use the same things for, uh, in our studio, okay? So for that, I'm going to create one more series. So you can just keep, uh, you know, checking them parallelly or based on your convenience. So that can help you. So in this particular video, let's go and see how we can authenticate, how we can establish that uh, connection and authenticate uh, by using the access key. So first of all, before getting into that, um, if you don't know how to use Postman, so let me just show you quickly. So you can create an instance for yourself in the Postman. So once after you create the account and come over here, um, here you can create a new collection. So just give a collection name. So just uh, give a demo collection or whatever the collection name. So once after you give it uh, here, you can see you can just click on add a request. So it will be, you will be directed to this particular page where you can add the request. So we all know, right? There are multiple methods, right? Like get, post, put, patch and all this. So based on the documentation, I will be showing you parallelly how we can do that. So based on this, I will be, um, helping you out to what are the inputs that it actually need and how the output we have to get from a particular API. Okay, uh, so 
till now we are good right so once after you create this um let me come over here this is the one that i am taking so once after you do that uh, you can uh, create or you know you can do the api calls so first let's take a request so in this uh, either you have to let me go to the this is this is basically my reference how what i'm going to do how i'm going to do what will be the input how the output should look like everything it's it's a documentation that i have i'll share you the link also in the description so this is my reference from here i'll be taking all the apis that i needed for this uh, session okay so if you see we are doing the post authentication so that means we are doing a post call so just copy this particular url and go to the postman and change this to post and copy that endpoint url okay so everything got copied just remove this and if you uh, want there is one more documentation as well so i'll show you that thing as well so you can either take from here or from there so once after the end point is given what else is the input so this is a request request means you know right that's the input that we are using for uh, calling or uh, requesting from the server okay so it has an header which is content type okay just copy this header content type go to postman here i'm going to add a header which is the content type and what is the value of this application slash json okay so just copy this and just get the value and once this is done we, we have given header and then the data this is the body of the particular json okay so just copy this whole body and here go to the body and here you can just give the body type as raw and once after you select it just give the value here just give the value here so if you if it is shown as text just change that to json okay so because this is a json type so once after that is done we have uh, we have given all the values that uh, we have to provide for requesting or you know uh, for requesting uh, from the server but if you just see here the value which is client id and the refresh token these both are the values which are confined to that particular orchestrator tenant okay so how you can get these two values is very important so for that you just go and log in into your orchestrator tenant so once after you are in this page go to admin and here in the tenant you'll have an option against your orchestrator which is api access just click on it so once after you click on that particular thing you will get to see the user key and the client id so just copy the user key go to the postman this is the user key you have to replace with save it and then the uh, client id this is the client id Let's replace it with this so that's it we have provided the endpoint url we have given the header and we have given the body with the uh, values that are confined to our orchestrated tenant so once this is done just click on send so that's it if you see 200 is the just come over here this is our reference right 200 is the status code as i said you for authentication 200 is the success code so 200 says it is success and it's a okay and the body should contains all this information it should contain access token id token scope expires in and token type so this particular access token what i'm getting from here this will be my uh, key in order to perform uh, the next steps okay so i would be copying this let's go to postman so copy this whole thing so if you see i have i have got my access token from here till here so i'll just copy this whole part so this will be my access token or the barrier token i will be using this 
particular token in order to perform the next uh, actions in the orchestrator okay so that's it and in this particular token it will expire after 24 hours so for that you have uh, you have to again the use this uh, uh, refresh token will be used so that will be uh, generating a new uh, barrier key so that's how we will be using so this is all about the postman how we will be using uh, the particular endpoint and how we will be getting the access token so the same action how it can be done in the uh, studio by using the activities that i'll show in the next video so if you find this useful and if you see that this is a new topic that you wanted to learn i will be posting videos regularly every day at least one video on this particular thing so that will be helpful for your learning so do not miss any of the videos do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will get the video as soon as i upload it thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions do let me know in the comment section i'll share all the links that you needed for uh, taking this process for your hands on in the description thank you so much